covered an inch or so of disturbing plants. So what I've been doing this year is I've got a heat mat indoors and I've been using these little things to start seeds off and I've then had to tip the seeds out and put them into a pot like this which obviously have resulted in root disturbance and then I've had to tip them out of this pot to plant them out in the ground. I think there must be a better way of doing it and I think I might have found it. So I'm just going to take this apart for a minute and get these pots that I just bought off for Amazon last week and get some of them out. Now these are fibre pots that you just use one time only and um, then you plant the plant out in the fibre pot. Here we go. So if I fill one of those with um, compost or two of those with compost I can put them in there with some water in the bottom like I normally would put the lid on top to keep the moisture in, pop them on the heat mat, and then when they germinate they can go out into my um, outdoor propagator and sit in the uh, same kind of tray I leave these in for a while until the plant's ready to go in the ground and then be planted straight out in the ground with no root disturbance at all. And not only that, the fibre pot makes a good little bit of fertiliser. I forgot to mention they come with these little plastic tabs in there. There's a hundred pots in the bag and there's a hundred of these little plastic tabs so you can write on them what each thing is. Now I do think in some ways it's a shame that with fibre pots they've got new plastic tabs. They could have made them out of cardboard or something biodegradable. But uh, there you go, you've got the plastic tabs. So you can identify your plants more easily. I got some of these fibre pots off Amazon um, a couple of weeks ago. And I think I've just figured out a perfect way to use them. Because what you want to do is you want to give the, uh, your seeds the best possible start and the least possible amount of disturbance. So what I've done is I've filled these pots to within about an inch of the top with general purpose compost, which is great for growing seedlings on. Now I'm going to put one of these little cardboard rolls in there and put an inch or so of John Innes compost inside it. Next I'm going to put a tiny pinch of this mycorrhizal fungus powder in there, because that helps to... Uh, um, develop the plant's roots when you plant them. Next in goes a sweet corn seed roughly in the middle like so. Then I fill up the middle bit with John Innes compost which is best for starting the seedlings off um, but John Innes is sort of a bit more expensive and uh, also it's a bit sort of sandy and unstructured and so on so I'm going to put some general purpose compost around the outside here just to uh, fill it up. doesn't matter if a bit gets on the top because obviously the seed is in the John Innes compost as you as you saw. All together like that and then two of these will fit onto one of these little um, trays that actually came with some uh, actually came with some um, seed things to go inside them. But the problem with them is you end up disturbing the plants when you pop them all onto a bigger pot and then disturbing them again when you pop them out. This way, the plants aren't going to be disturbed at all because they're going to be grown in these fibre pots in the John Innes compost, then root down into the uh, proper general purpose compost and then grow on up into healthy plants and the whole fibre pot we plant it out in the garden, so I just need to add some water to this, pop them on the heat mat indoors, and um, two or three days, and the seeds will be up, and then they can come outside and go into my propagator in the garden to harden off, ready to go out.